everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's gonna to be talking about markups on vehicles and how it is not exactly the dealer's fault for this whole situation happening. Before you get into the video though, as always, if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's jump right into it. The best way to talk about this over MSRP issue is to break it up into four little gremlins is what we're going to call it. So the first one is supply chain issues. The next one is manufacturing issues. The next one is dealership issues, I guess is what we'll call it. And the last one is you as the consumer, you are the issue. So let's first talk about the whole supply chain issue thing. This is something that I've talked about in several videos, but basically, right, it's hard to get raw materials and it's hard to get, you know, certain items that are slightly manufactured or extremely manufactured for that matter. It's just, it's hard to get anything in today's market. Just take your car in and try to get something serviced. For example, you're going to find that almost any little piece or part that you need for your car is probably on back order. It's just absolutely ridiculous. This obviously translates to manufacturers that are trying to produce vehicles. It's just hard for them to get parts, right? Everyone pretty much knows about this. Now, if we dive into the manufacturing side of things, this is where it gets, well, I wouldn't say more nuanced, just nuanced in a different way. And that is the fact that some manufacturers that have done a really good job with dealing with the situation and other manufacturers, frankly, haven't. I think the manufacturers that have done the best job are luxury brands. I know it sounds crazy, but luxury brands and the manufacturers that have done the worst job with handling the situation are non-luxury brands. And it shows with the numbers because a lot of luxury manufacturers are actually selling more cars now than they ever have in the past. And they're selling them for big profits. A really good example is actually Bentley. I watched an entire documentary on the fact that Bentley is more profitable than it ever has been. And they're actually selling more cars than they ever have. And it's in the middle of this whole supply chain issue that we are apparently struggling with. And somehow this low volume manufacturer Bentley can figure it out. And the way that they figured it out is they build cars that people actually want to buy. They focus on the models that people are buying and they focus their energy and resources to producing those models so that they can keep up with demand as much as they possibly can. Now, obviously Bentley being a low production manufacturer does have some advantages in this market, right? Because once you try to build things up to a mass produced scale, things do fall apart a little bit, but the higher volume manufacturers can still learn from luxury manufacturers like Bentley in terms of focusing on building vehicles that people want to buy, right? And this is something that's slowly starting to happen, but it's not happening at a quick enough pace. A really good example is with Ford. Ford has recently discontinued production of the EcoSport so that they can focus resources onto vehicles that people actually want to buy, like Ford Raptors, for example, and Ford Broncos as well. So it's a really smart decision because people aren't really buying EcoSports right now. I mean, there's a few people, but like you can go to Ford dealerships right now and you'll see like a few eco sports in the lot, but you won't see a single Raptor, for example, or a Bronco that is not already pre-sold on their lots if it's brand new. And so again, some manufacturers are starting to learn, but not quick enough. This should have happened a year ago. This shouldn't be happening now because it's a little bit too late. And we're gonna talk about why it's a little bit too late towards the end of the video. Now, the next thing is dealerships. And this is what everyone is putting the blame on and that is dealerships because dealerships ultimately are the entity that is charging these crazy prices. And yes, dealers are taking advantage of the situation, but you gotta look at it from their perspective. They're a business just like any other. And most dealers are franchises, right? That's how the dealer network works in the US with most manufacturers. And so what that means is that all they are really concerned about is profits. And I know that that's an ugly thing to say apparently in today's world, but you know, people have to make a living. And so with the dealers not getting nearly enough inventory and especially not getting the inventory that they actually need that their customers actually want, means that they're gonna go into like an auction style of selling vehicles, right? In the past, it would have been, hey, this is the vehicle you wanna order, this is what the manufacturer says it costs, here you go, take your order. Whereas now it's like, okay, there's 20 of you that want this one vehicle we're getting, so the highest bidder gets it, right? And that's where it leads into you being the problem as the consumer, because people are choosing to go after these vehicles that are being sold at these really high prices and they're, again, they're choosing to buy them because ultimately 
the dealers have the pricing power because people are still buying these vehicles. And so again, it's not just like one individual entity being the problem. It's kind of everything all combined together from there's an issue with getting parts. There's an issue with manufacturing. The biggest issue I see with manufacturing is not the fact that there's low supply, but it's the fact that manufacturers, high volume manufacturers more specifically, didn't focus enough time on producing models that people actually want to buy and then dealers taking advantage of the situation. But frankly, they're a business just like any other business. And so they're just doing what businesses do. And I know a lot of people are probably gonna think that I'm going out on a limb and defending dealers. I'm not. I think that dealers should bite the bullet and just deal with the lower supply because it's not like they wouldn't be unprofitable if they weren't charging over MSRP. Most dealers, if they just charged MSRP on product, no matter what the supply is, would still be fine in today's market, right? There's a lot of dealers that are saying, oh, I got to got to put food in the table. It's more like, well, got to go buy another Lamborghini because you know, whatever. So like, that's my opinion. But again, I don't have any like negative feelings towards dealers that are charging over MSRP because it's like, well, the consumers ultimately are choosing to pay those prices. So let's tie everything together and talk about the future implications for this whole situation. So first off, manufacturers need to understand that the supply chain issue is not gonna get any better anytime soon. It's probably going to get worse, frankly, with everything that has been happening. So they need to pivot their business to be able to survive in this new world. And I think going the luxury car route is the route to go. And what that is, is focus on high profitability, high desirability vehicles. That was kind of a weird way to say that, but you guys get the point. Manufacturers should build the vehicles that people want to buy that also make those manufacturers a lot of money. A really good example is with Ford and the Ford Raptor. The Ford Raptor makes a ton of money for Ford every single time they build one of them. And guess what? That's the vehicle that a lot of people want to buy right now. Build more Raptors, make more money. It just makes sense, okay? Now, moving on from that to the dealerships. My recommendation for dealerships is if you're still charging over MSRP for any of your product, you should probably stop pull back and give some good deals to your customers, especially the customers that are purchasing multiple vehicles from you every single year. Because this group of customers that purchases multiple vehicles from dealers and manufacturers every single year is the same group of people that are moving from one dealer to another dealer and from one manufacturer to another manufacturer more than any other group. Because they're the same group of people that is getting impacted the most by these over MSRP sales. Because guess what? The types of vehicles that a person that's in a lower income bracket is going to purchase is the same type of vehicle that's typically not being marked up crazy amounts over MSRP. A lot of times they're being discounted under MSRP just to make it so that person can afford that vehicle in terms of getting a loan on that vehicle. I worked at a dealership. I know how it works. Now on the flip side, this group of customers that buys multiple vehicles every single year and is going after you know the really rare and desirable product is the same group of people that I've noticed a huge mindset shift in. So what I noticed pre-COVID is this group of people wanted rare vehicles and they were willing to pay high dollar amounts to have these rare vehicles because they just wanted to be that person with the cool vehicle. But now the mindset seems to have shifted to where this group of people wants the vehicles to actually use them for what they were intended to be used for. And they just want the vehicles because they want them. They don't care how many a manufacturer produces. They just care what the performance of that vehicle is, what that vehicle has to offer, not the rarity that vehicle has to offer. And so again, as a dealership, if you push these customers away, you are pushing away the customers that are making your store the most amount of money because this isn't a customer that's coming in and buying a $20,000 car once every five to 10 years. This is a customer that's coming into your store and buying three to four to five to sometimes, I've seen people send me emails that they buy 10 vehicles per year and they're buying vehicles that are 50 to 100 to 150 to $200,000 and again, multiply that by at least three to four, if not five to 10 vehicles per year. And that's a ton of money for your store, even if you're not charging them over MSRP. And guess what? 
frankly, if you try to charge these people over MSRP in today's market, they just leave to another store within your same manufacturer or what's been happening now because every single store charges over MSRP is they just go to another manufacturer that doesn't charge over MSRP. Now we're gonna cap things off with a real life story that just perfectly describes the situation that's happening right now. Someone messaged me today talking about how they have purchased six vehicles in the last two years from a particular dealership and automaker. Now, if we look at vehicle profits for automakers and for dealerships right now, with dealerships, they make about $3,000 to $4,000 per car, roughly in profit. And then automakers, if we assume about 10% in profit per car, because all the vehicles that this particular person was purchasing are cars that are very profitable for that automaker. And they are at least 50,000, if not 100,000 for some of the cars in terms of the actual price. Then what that means from a mathematical standpoint is this person was making that dealership roughly nine to $12,000 on the low side of things, because sometimes dealerships can make even more profit on these high dollar cars on the back end side of things with warranties and everything. But anyways, on the low side, at least nine to $12,000 per year. And then for the manufacturer, right? If we assume about a 10% profit and a lot of the vehicles they're purchasing are between fifty dollars and $100,000, then we're talking about like fifteen dollars to $30,000 in profit per year. It's like guaranteed income for this dealership and for this manufacturer. Well, guess what? This person then went and tried to order another vehicle from that manufacturer and from that dealership, and they got told that they'd have to pay $50,000 over sticker for this vehicle. You guys can probably guess what it is. So now this person is never going to purchase another vehicle from that dealer or from that manufacturer as well. They have a vehicle on order that is from a completely different automaker. And so this dealership was stupid enough to lose their best type of customer. And I really wanna emphasize this. These customers that purchase multiple vehicles per year need to be taken care of from a price point perspective. Yes, the dealers still do need to make money, but if these dealers are selling these vehicles at MSRP and these people are buying warranties or accessorizing their vehicles, the dealers are making money in other ways. And so they just need to take care of these people because if they look at things from a long-term perspective, and if they look at, especially with this customer, if we get three vehicles per year out of this person, the amount of money they're gonna make is so much more than a quick $50,000 profit on just one vehicle one time. And guess what? That $50,000 profit didn't even happen for that customer. And so the dealership and the manufacturer lost that customer forever. And this isn't just one case. This is happening a massive, massive amount. So I'm gonna just repeat it one more time. Dealerships and manufacturers need to be on the same page about this whole pricing thing. What they need to do is make it so they're only charging MSRP to their customers. This is, again, what a lot of luxury manufacturers do is they make sure that it's just MSRP and the luxury manufacturers make sure the dealerships have enough profit built into these vehicles that at MSRP, they are making a healthy living. So then these customers that have a lot of money that are purchasing a lot of vehicles every single year stay with them because they are ultimately the customers that are gonna keep these dealerships and these manufacturers afloat in the long term. In the short term, hype does sell and these dealerships will be able to make some solid profits. But in the long term, they're gonna lose their best customers and what that ultimately means is they're gonna lose market share and they are eventually potentially going to go out of business. So if you're a dealer, I would do the smart thing and stop charging over MSRP, even if it's specialty product, take care of these customers because their business in the long term will be worth so much more than that one over MSRP sale. That's gonna sum things up. I'll see ya.